I know how difficult it is and it's an area that interests me and it's an area that we need to do better in. So I was very pleased to come along. Um, so thank you very much for accepting me <laughs> as a hopefully um, a, a reasonable substitute and I'm delighted to say a few words. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from all of the speakers tonight actually and, and learning a bit more about that really important and impactful work um, that fight bladder cancer are doing and in particular I'm looking forward to hearing directly from people with lived experience, those people who are directly affected by bladder cancer, learning more about the barriers that people are facing and how we can work collectively across government, third sector and health and social care systems to remove these challenges which I am committed to do. Now the themes of the presentation tonight as I understand it around the cancer workforce, improving the times and quality of services, diagnosis, these are all important issues to me. And I know that these themes also came through in the Fight Bladder Cancer Exemplar Report. And I hopefully am going to be able to outline some of the steps that we're taking to address and improve these challenges. So we know that bladder cancer mortality reduced by 14% over the decade from 2010 to 2020 and we're committed to continuing to improve that. As outlined in our endoscopy and neurology diagnostic recovery and your renewal plan, we're going to refresh and implement once for Scotland clinical pathways to prioritise demand for cystoscopy including bladder cancers. We've also introduced six urology hubs in Scotland and these hubs provide rapid access to diagnostic procedures to enable earlier cancer diagnosis and treatment, which I know is a common theme faced by far too many bladder cancer patients. Now, as everyone in the room tonight will know, the earlier that cancer is diagnosed, the easier it is to treat and even cure. And that's why we continue to invest in our Detect Cancer Early programme. Since DCE launched, positive shifts have been noted, but unfortunately, as with many areas of work in our healthcare system, the pandemic, pandemic has impacted the progress. But our new earlier um, <coughs> cancer diagnosis vision in Scotland is due to be published very shortly, along with a new ambitious 10-year um, cancer strategy which will outline the future of the DCE programme. Now as well as that, £10 million of funding has been directed to support cancer waiting time improvements in our NHS across 2022-23. Funds are largely being directed towards colorectal and neurology specialties, including bladder cancer because we know that they are two of the most challenged 62-day pathways. And a refresh of the Framework for Effective Cancer Management was published in December 2021. That provides NHS cancer teams with the tools to effectively manage patients with a suspicion of cancer from the point of referral to first treatment. Now that will further improve the patient experience as well as cancer waiting times, and it incorporates new ways of managing cancer services, which have emerged as a result of COVID-19. And that includes clinical prioritization with a joined up approach to accessing multidisciplinary teams to aid care and recovery, as well as virtual appointments. Now, given this, we will strive to do more and be ambitious, as, as, as ambitious as we can. That's why we've proposed in our cancer strategy consultation to develop a 10-year strategy and underpin our strategic ambition with three yearly action plans. So those action plans will outline the actions required in order to work to those strategic objectives. The results of our consultation have already been published and demonstrated that there is a, a large um, level of agreement to our propositions. And I want to thank Fight Bladder Cancer for their input into that consultation. 
Now, a number of key themes have come through the analysis as well, suggesting that we focus on ensuring equal access across Scotland. Um, I would have to say as a Highland MSP, that's a bit of a passion of mine. Um, and, a, and, a, and a common theme across many conditions. Preventative measures, you know, I'm public health minister, I am thinking all the time, how do we prevent these um, conditions from developing in the first place as we talk about, you know, instead of getting good at, uh, and I said this already to Monica, I'm just going to repeat it again, instead of getting good at picking people out of the river and saving them from drowning, let's stop them falling in in the first place. And we need to do more of that in Scotland. We need to promote healthier lifestyles. We need to ensure that there is a person-centred approach in all of our care. And crucially, and particularly at this moment in time, it's always been vital that we care for our carers. But at this moment in time, as we come through and out of the toughest period that this NHS has ever faced, we need to support our workforce. It's very clear to us that we need to better connect and build awareness and huge range of information and support services that are delivered in the third sector by you and others. And that's very much informed our plans and we're keen to support that integration that could help so many more patients and their families like those we're going to hear from tonight. In order to deliver on those plans, we need a robust, safe and specialist health workforce who are the absolute backbone of our NHS and make a real difference to patients in ensuring patient-centred care is achieved. And across all of the health workforce, including cancer, we are seeing shortages of healthcare professionals. So it's more important than ever that we focus on supporting our workforce. Cancer services are becoming more complex. Demand on treatment is rising with our growing and ageing population, which is a good thing, let me assure you. I'm, I'm about to turn 50 this weekend. <laughs> the demand on treatment is rising um, because of our ageing population. Since 2006, there's been an 87.7% increase in consultant oncologists and a 57.4% increase in consultant radiologists. And as well as that, since 2014, 574 trainee expansion posts have been created in a wide range of specialties. But we know that despite the increase in workforce numbers, our NHS staff are still under immense pressure. So to further improve workforce, we're looking at the current fragility and the future of oncology service. A short life working group of NHS board, chief executives and medical directors have been meeting to consider the wider sustainability of oncology services right across Scotland to ensure resilient oncology services for the patients right across Scotland. And a final report was presented to them at the end of last month and I'll be sharing our next steps <coughs> shortly. Or, comes this replacement one. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much for the invite tonight. I look forward to hearing from you all at this event. Thank you.